I hope you all can see my screen. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Vindya. And uh, today I will be taking you all through um, how we are going about fostering design thinking mindsets among university students in CMR University. Oops. So uh, first of all, a very, um, a very good afternoon, good evening, good night, and good morning to everyone out here. And uh, my name is Vindya, Vindya Umapati, and I'm from CMR University, which is in Bangalore, India. And uh, as we started, I just wanted to uh, give you a little bit of context about India itself. So um, India is actually the fastest growing large economy in the world and it is so diverse it is culturally diverse and in all aspects extremely diverse um, we have over 2000 ethnic groups uh, we speak over 100 languages and it is the birthplace of over four ma of four major religions and um, we are the leader in digital transactions so 41 percent of the world's real-time transactions happen in India. Uh, we're also, uh, we've also become number one right now with our population. And uh, we'd like to say we are the largest talent factory uh, in the world. And uh, one of the good things about this is that uh, most of our population is actually very young. We have a fairly young population with the average age being 29 years. And um, so our GDP is also doing well. So we are at uh, you know, over $3.5 trillion right now. And uh, to tell you a little bit more about where we stand in terms of um, innovation, uh, India is transforming at a tremendous pace and scale. So right now we are number three in the world when it comes to the total number of unicorns. We've seen a rapid rise uh, over the last couple of years. And we are also number one in the world when it comes to startups, the number of startups. We have new startups being added every day. Thank you. So, yes. Yes. All the, others can, all the others can hear you. Okay. Okay. All right. Everything okay? All right. Okay, I'll go ahead then. And uh, there are two major hubs in India, uh, two major clusters where we have, uh, you know, uh, an innovation ecosystem of sorts. So we have one hub around Delhi in the north and uh, one hub around Bangalore. And Bangalore is the startup capital of India. So we have a lot going on out here. And uh, this was just to give you a little bit of context to, uh, you know, who we are, where we are. Uh, because that forms a big part of our story. So uh, right now, Bangalore is uh, growing at a rapid pace, and um, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of startups here. We have a it, we have a huge IT boom. Uh, people are coming to Bangalore from all over the country and even from around the world. Uh, and uh, talent plays a huge role. Universities play a huge role in building this innovation ecosystem in Bangalore. So now we'll get to uh, CMR University. I'll give you a little bit of context about our university as well. This is our founder. He is late Sri Chikkamuniyappa Reddy, and he was fondly known as CMR. And he is somebody who had um, you know, he had a vision to ensure that uh, we bring education for the masses, that we have quality education, that we have whole education, and that we make education affordable. So these were the main pillars uh, that he laid down uh, with his vision for uh, what education must be. So this is how CMR University uh, started about three decades ago. Um, this is what was laid down and uh, a trust was formed and uh, the university had started and the university is also growing at a very rapid pace. And since we're looking at uh, design thinking in CMR University, uh, I must mention our provost, uh, Dr. Trishta Ramurthy, 
she is somebody who is uh, who is key when it comes to transforming the way that we uh, go about education in CMR University and in the CMR group of institutions. Uh, she is somebody who has uh, studied all over the world. She has, uh, you know, she has her uh, doctorate from King's College in London, and she has uh, also done her master's in Stanford, and she's also done her bachelor's um, in Singapore, and she's looking to bring all of the best practices from across the world uh, into CMR University and looking to, uh, you know, build a culture of innovation, build student leaders, and uh, ensure that students become change makers. So that brings me to the vision of CMR University. Our vision is to nurture creative thinkers who will drive positive global change. So this was a very powerful vision that was laid down. And uh, I keep going back to the vision all the time. Uh, we keep the vision as our North Star. We keep going back to this. Uh, anytime we're looking at designing our curriculum, anytime we're looking at uh, you know doing anything that we're doing, we come back to this. And uh, I found it to be a very one of a, a very powerful vision compared to a lot of other visions that I've seen. So I'm sorry, it's gone back. I think I'm sorry. A little more context about CMR University. We are part of the CMR group of institutions and we have been here for three decades in higher education. We have four campuses across Bangalore in different parts of Bangalore. Uh, we have eight schools of studies and over 60 programs that are offered and we have over 6,000 students and uh, 250 plus educators in our university. And uh, the courses at our university are offered under these main categories. Uh, one is our program core curriculum. Uh, program core curriculum is curriculum that is um, deeply aligned with uh, the course that uh, students have chosen, be it um, law or engineering, based on their discipline. They have their program curriculum, program core curriculum. And common core curriculum is curriculum that is there for students uh, across all streams, regardless of uh, what they are specializing in. So um, the objective of Common Core curriculum is that uh, we are looking to help students thrive in the university of life. And uh, we're helping students prepare for a future that they do not know, for jobs that don't exist today, and for all of life's challenges. So these are our key objectives and uh, everything we do, we, we align ourselves to these three key objectives and also uh, the three main aspects of our common core curriculum, which is preparing for success, contributing to society and knowing self and community. So um, design thinking is a course that is being offered by the Department of Common Core Curriculum. And we are also looking at enabling like we are also looking at getting students to um, prepare for success, contribute to society and know themselves better through design thinking as well. So uh, a little more context about uh, all of the different activities we are uh, up to with uh, design thinking in the Department of Common Core Curriculum. We are, of course, we have a design thinking course for students. Um, we have different types of courses. We have uh, week-long course courses. We also have semester-long courses. They are credited courses. Uh, I'll tell you a little more about that a little later. Uh, we have an annual event. Uh, this is our flagship event, the Design Thinking Day. And uh, this was the event that uh, Professor Yuli was also a part of. And this time we held the Global Innovation Challenge. Um, and we are also uh, into faculty training. We have trained our uh, faculty from different streams as well. We're getting everybody aligned with the design thinking process so that they can take it uh, forward with their subjects as well. So uh, we have just very recently opened our design thinking lab, um, a space for creative collaboration. And uh, we are looking to launch our design thinking club and we will get to that as well shortly. And uh, now we are also into 
um, consultancy a little bit, we could call it. Uh, we are also conducting sessions for uh, CMR PU, that is the 11th and 12th grade students who are part of the CMR group of institutions, part of the CMR group of schools. Uh, we are also conducting uh, sessions for them, an enrichment program for them. This is something new that just started over the last month. And uh, we will soon also be consulting with an external organization. So that way, keeping uh, you know our skills relevant, being in touch with industry, trying to bring them in as well. So these are some of the activities that uh, that you know that we are up to. And uh, this is our team. Um, of course, uh, I'm here. Uh, Shirley is also here. I saw Shirley was here. Shirley, could you could you say a quick hi? Shirley. All right, one second. All right, I can't see Shirley yet. Um, all right, and then we have Gauri uh, and Vignesh. Vignesh is also here, he can see a quick hi. Hi. Okay, so Vignesh is right here with me in the room, so there's a slight bit of an echo. And uh, Hari, you can also wave. Uh, Hari is also here. So he is um, Hari is our uh, innovation lab supervisor. He takes care of the design thinking lab. Um, all of us facilitate design thinking workshops and sessions for students across all streams. Hello, everyone. Gauri, are you here? I'm sorry, I missed Gauri, I think. I thought, Gauri, are you here? Would you like to wave and say a hi to yeah. everyone? Uh, okay. I cannot yeah, switch on the camera right now, but yeah, hi everyone. Okay, great. Hi. So um, we are the design thinking team at CMR University. We are also a very diverse team. Um, Gauri and Hari are from the north, um, and uh, the rest of us are from South India, from different parts of the country. And we've all uh, magically come together, and uh, we are the design thinking team, and we conduct. We create sessions, we create the curriculum, and we conduct sessions for students across all streams. And uh, it's been it's been a very interesting and uh, adventurous journey doing this. Um, all right. So we facilitate sessions for students, um, of course, across all streams. We we facilitate sessions which are one credit courses or two credit courses, four credit courses, as well as the graduate requirement. Uh, we're doing this in the form of week long sprints and in the form of semester long courses. And so far, uh, we've done this for over 4,200 students uh, over the last two academic years. So that's been a big milestone for us. Um, and today we are going to tell you a little bit about how we are looking at um, fostering design thinking mindsets among our students and the initiatives that we have taken um, in order to do this. Uh, this is something that we've all found uh, to be very, very essential, uh, more than the process or uh, anything else that students tend to learn in during their design thinking sessions. Uh, what we really hope that students take away at the end of this is um, a shift in their mindset and a shift in the way that they work with others. So these are the three main aspects uh, that we are looking at when it comes to uh, design thinking mindsets. So we have our design thinking lab that we've designed very recently and it's up and running now. Uh, we also have an open innovation challenge that we put out that, that also happened quite recently. Uh, we had that in March. And we also are looking at our design thinking club. Uh, this is something we are looking to launch in the month of August. So I will tell you all a little story. I've actually uh, designed this presentation to be uh, more visual in terms of a lot of pictures and to tell you a few stories um, from our experiences here. So uh, one of the things that we realized is that students um, up to 12th grade in most schools uh, usually work by themselves and um, they are mainly focused on doing well in their 12th grade board exams, um, scoring a good score in order to get into a university. And I'm pretty sure it's, um, it's, it's similar in many, of the, in many of the other countries as well. 
So this is something that was uh, when they when they come into design thinking, when they come into our classes, this is something different that they that they tend to do because we are looking at getting them all to build a collaborative spirit. So this is something that they are not that used to, but they get used to it pretty quickly. And one of the key things we've seen when it comes to um, building a collaborative spirit is the is the kind of space that we set up in the beginning of our classes. So typically, our, all of our um, all of our sessions when we first started, we we started off in the the classrooms that they had for students um, across the different streams. So we would go to their classrooms and then we would conduct our sessions out there. Um, and then we very quickly realized that uh, you know this would it wouldn't work out you know we would we would struggle to get them into teams and all of that so we ended up completely rearranging the furniture this is how we this is how we started and uh, we got students this usually we tend to come in during their first semester so it's a great way for students to um, make new friends and to get to know each other so we we just started with um, you know getting uh, rearranging furniture there were some times where we even got furniture from one campus to another because uh, the tables sometimes would not uh, shift around. So we started making all of these make-do arrangements and we started building um, something that, that we later on realized uh, would turn out to be something much bigger than, uh, than what we were doing in the beginning. So this is how it all started. And uh, we would we would make the best of the space that we had. Uh, we've used the we've used the windows for brainstorming. We've used tables. We've used the spaces in between. Uh, we've done all of this, and students have also really enjoyed it because uh, they have uh, you know they've been able to break the format of how they typically sit in a classroom. So all of this has been a a big change for them, and they've really enjoyed it as well. And uh, sometimes our activities uh, don't really fit in the classrooms, so we end up coming out into the corridors, and uh, you know, having having all our sessions there. And uh, students who are walking past are usually very curious. The students who are in the activity, um, many of them who are shy, don't know each other too well, uh, get warmed up, and then they start, you know, getting along uh, by the end of our activities and by the end of our sessions. And sometimes. Uh, we also end up going uh, going down on the floor and sitting around in a circle on the floor because we also believe that it's uh, it's very powerful to be able to sit around in a circle. So um, it's also very natural in India to sit on the floor. Um, so this is something that uh, a lot of the students also enjoy. We, we try to break the format of sitting or standing and uh, we end up doing things a little differently. So this is how we all this is how we started, and these um, these experiences um, we 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 also had uh, some classrooms where we had you know tables where stu students could sit around. This was uh, the design thinking lab before we transformed it. So this is how this is how it was when we first started, and this led to designing our design thinking lab. Um, we got the approvals from the top management, we got the space, we got the budgets, we got uh, a very good furniture designer on board, and, uh, and then we could dream and we could create something. So this is what we ended up doing. This is a quote that really um, sticks to me. Uh, I studied architecture, so this is something that I keep going back to, which is that we shape our buildings, thereafter they shape us. So this is something I think about because space can have such a tremendous in impact on the way that we live, on the way that we interact with each other, on the way that we feel um, that we found it really essential that we have a space completely dedicated for design thinking. And so we designed the Design Thinking Lab. Uh, this is in CMR University's Lakeside campus. It's a new campus. And uh, this was a fairly new building and they had a completely open floor and uh, we happily took over it. So we ended up, uh, you know, having spaces for students to sit in teams, having spaces for students to brainstorm, having spaces for students to present in small group as well as in large groups, having a space for uh, rapid prototyping and having a space to just uh, just chill and just be. So this is this is what we ended up uh, dreaming of. And this is what we ended up 
uh, doing. So these are some 3D renders of the space that we finally uh, got designed. And this is the space. So all of this happened uh, over the last few months. I think we started sometime in January and by March we had the space up and running. So now students um, work out of the design thinking lab. Uh, all of the students who are at the Lakeside campus, they are uh, usually extremely happy to be there. They naturally gravitate towards the lab. Uh, they're there even outside of their um, class hours and they are more excited to work on their projects. They are more excited to uh, be together and they're more excited to brainstorm. So uh, the space allows for small presentations with a small group because we're looking at uh, tiny projects and um, teams presenting to other teams. And we also have spaces where uh, students can just move the furniture around. These cubes especially, uh, we really love these cubes. They're light, they are, uh, you know, they're stackable as well and we can move them around. And uh, it, it allows for a really um, intimate uh, setting where we can interact with students uh, at eye level and just sit around uh, again in a circle. So another thing we have realized when it comes to building the collaborative spirit is that um, since we form, since we get students to form teams and work in teams, we've realized that many of them um, feel, you know, not so comfortable in their team. They may have disagreements. They may not get along with each other in their team. Um, some teams, you know, break up, they fall apart, all of the, the, the natural things that end up happening. So uh, sometimes all we have to do is uh, kind of become a counselor as well. We, we sit down with the team and uh, we look at, okay, what is, what is going on? What is not working? And we get them to come up with the solutions themselves. And um, through, through going through all of this, um, students and teams slowly learn to uh, work together. We've seen, we've seen teams go through uh, all the different phases that they talk about, that is, uh, you know, the storming and the forming, the storming, uh, performing and adjoining. We see them go through all of this um, in, our, in our spaces. So um, we believe that we, we can see a huge change in our students and the way that they interact with each other simply by using the design thinking lab. So uh, this is again an example of uh, students presenting to each other. Um, they all work on projects. Sometimes they, they travel and uh, they try to search for answers. They bring it back and then they share it with their classmates. And uh, sometimes we also have very large group sessions. Uh, so uh, sometimes we just need to call everybody and, uh, and talk to the whole group. So again, the lab um, allows us to do this because now we have different levels of seating. We have uh, students being able to move furniture around. We've kept the lab very flexible. And, uh, and when they are able to sit around informally, when they're able to sit with their classmates like this, uh, we see a different kind of a bond that uh, develops among the students. So uh, this is something that uh, we, we are really cherishing over the last couple of months as we've been using the lab. And it's not just the students. Uh, we've also had our faculty, our faculty members come and use the lab to collaborate, to discuss, to, to present their work. So it's been, um, it's been great for the faculty as well. So we've seen how space can absolutely transform um, how people feel in a space and how people interact with each other in a space. So uh, going on, moving on to uh, the next mindset, uh, we were looking at the spirit of experimentation. So with the spirit of experimentation, again, our design thinking lab has played, played a key role in enabling students to experiment because being able to experiment means being able to stay back for longer hours. Uh, being able to experiment means being able to sit with your project and uh, not really be disturbed. So we've got students who come back, uh, usually our university, um, you know, they're usually all students leave at the end of the day and not too many students stay back because it's a very new university. Um, it's a little bit in the outskirts of the city, so not too many students stay back. So slowly, because of our lab, uh, we are seeing students stay back. Uh, we have Hari, uh, who is taking care of our lab, and he usually stays back in the lab. 
and encourages the students and um, students end up taking on passion projects and uh, and working on all kinds of things so right now they're also trying to uh, you know problem solve in the lab itself one of the uh, one of the little problems that we have is that uh, we have a lot of windows in our lab it's not really a problem it's actually a blessing uh, but uh, the problem is that somebody has to close all of those windows before they leave so uh, one of the projects that they are working on is getting a robot to go around the entire uh, lab and uh, you know take pictures of all the windows and detect which ones are open and which ones are closed and uh, this is so that it can help whoever has to close the windows close the windows just straight go up to those specific windows and close the windows so um, they're taking on some uh, very interesting uh, sometimes fun sometimes silly um, and sometimes very practical projects all of this is uh, just in its very early stages uh, i can see our prototyping space and our maker space slowly coming to life and uh, transforming over time uh, this is another example of um, experimentation so uh, of course these are these are both like physical very tangible examples of experimentation but we have seen students experiment a lot uh, even on paper right just uh, they they keep going even when things are hard so uh, we've seen students do that so uh, this is uh, a, a floating sculpture of our university logo our university logo is the swan it's a blue swan and uh, we are having uh, you know we we got a, a sculptor on board to uh, do a small workshop with our students to explore uh, how they can make a floating sculpture so this entire sculpture was uh, was was done by students uh, along with the facilitator so our architecture students and our film school students all of them got together um, they laid down these um, aluminium pipes which were uh, you know painted blue and uh, and there were a lot of calculations involved and uh, and they finally made it happen so this is also something that we're proud of and it is um, this this swan this we're calling the swan the hamsa the hamsa means swan um, and uh, this is proudly uh, up in one of our main blocks um, it's in the school of design and in the school of architecture so this is something that was also there this is where we also had our design thinking day so you might see that in our photographs and uh, this is some of the feedback that we received from the students of course there are just uh, four out here uh, this is the feedback that we received from our very first batch of students who ended up using the design thinking uh, lab this is from our design school students uh, they told us that they really look forward to being in the space that they're excited to work with their teams and that they feel more open and comfortable and uh, to be here so this is something that's very reassuring for us and uh, I feel like we are in the beginning of, uh, of something big that is going to happen with our design thinking lab. So uh, moving on to our uh, second big initiative that uh, we wanted to talk about in terms of building the design thinking mindset. This is cause 2023. Um, cause 2023 was a global open innovation challenge. This is something that we put out for both schools and universities. In the beginning, we were thinking that uh, let's let's just have it for uh, our university. And from there, we decided to open it out to other universities as well. And then we decided that, uh, you know what, innovation uh, shouldn't really have an age. Let's open it out to schools as well. So we did that. And since we also went online, uh, we decided to make it global and uh, and it just it just grew organically and we saw some amazing participation we had 750 teams register from 10 countries we had 3000 participants and uh, from 90 unique institutions and uh, and then we got more than 30 jurors on board from four different countries um, in fact uh, avinash who is also here was also one of our online jurors um, so it was it was truly remarkable. It was uh, really incredible to see what happened. So all of us uh, were really busy in the first few months of the year trying to put up this challenge. And uh, we believe that through having an open innovation challenge, 
uh, we decided to call it cause because uh, we we wanted it to um, sound like it it is because we were looking at uh, the sustainable development goals that students are designing something for a cause and also that we want also we wanted students to know that uh, they can right because we can so um, we wanted students to know that they are capable of solving real world problems uh, we wanted students to work in interdisciplinary teams uh, we wanted to connect a diverse network of industry mentors and experts and peers with our students and we wanted to we wanted students to share the same platform we wanted to do away with age so we had uh, students all the way from fifth grade uh, all the way to undergraduate and postgraduate courses uh, all of them in the same space um, uh, displaying their work and uh, sharing their thoughts on the problems that they've identified and the solutions that they've come up with so that was something really incredible so having these initiatives uh, we we could really see how it totally pushes students to uh, you know bring out their absolute creative best so um, we focused on the sustainable development goals for this challenge uh, students could pick any of the goals, look at problems that uh, are there in their own community, in their own neighborhood, and uh, look at, you know, think local and act global. So as in, sorry, think global and act local. So um, students picked up one of the one of the goals and they looked at one of the problems that they can find that is there in their community or in their city and uh, they problem solve for the same. So these are some images from our event. Uh, this is the same building. You can see the Hamsa and you can see we we'd invited the top 60 teams. We had multiple rounds. Um, we had an online round. We uh, you know shortlisted the entries and uh, we, we got the top 60 teams to uh, finally come, come on board. And of course, some of those teams were also online. And uh, of course, we had Professor Yuli uh, who was uh, our uh, guest of honor he helped inaugurate cause 2023 and uh, that was really wonderful so he was on the big screen we had a huge led screen and uh, you know everybody could uh, could see him on the screen so we had students present on the screen as well so this is just some glimpses of what our um, what our event looked like we had uh, students standing around and presenting their work to uh, passerbys we had uh, we had a we had a large audience. We had students from across the university. We had parents, we had faculty, we had industry experts. Um, we had everybody moving around and uh, you know giving students their feedback and having students present their work. So students having an opportunity to actually um, stand as a group, prepare for a presentation and present as a team. Um, that itself was a huge transformative experience. We've seen um, teams from schools, as Everybody's still on board. Ah. Sorry. You lost, yeah. okay. you lost you for a second. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. So uh, I'm just sharing some images from our event, from the Global Open Innovation Challenge. Uh, we've had students come up with apps and display them very professionally and uh, share this with the industry experts and parents and uh, you know and others so this was a this was a wonderful event uh, we've had students come in from uh, so many of the other universities as well and thanks to the global design thinking alliance we had great participation from our neighboring university um, sns sorry you can't hear me hi can you hear me yes we can yes hear yes you. we can i can okay. hear you all right okay great so uh, thanks to the global design thinking alliance we've also had um, amazing participation from one of our uh, other members from sns um, from sns institution so we've had so many students uh, register we've had uh, uh, many students even um, come all the way and stay in our campus and present their work here. This is one of their teams, in fact, who made it to the final round, who made it to the top six. 
um, and um, we came up with some very interesting projects around um, going doing away with uh, bed sores and um, coming up with the analogy of a chessboard and how can you uh, create beds that uh, you know don't cause bed sores especially for coma patients or for uh, people who are bedridden so it was a very very interesting project and um, a lot of uh, a lot of students we could see so much empathy we could see so much care uh, in all of their projects so we also had teams joining online we've had teams coming in from uh, this this particular team is from the us uh, they were also one of our top six teams so we've had teams joining online and sharing uh, their projects and their work um, on the big screen and we also had our online solution showcase um, which happened online so uh, we've had uh, out here we have avinash who is also from hpi and we also had adam from australia and we had teams from around the world um, so it was a very interesting experience because they got to see each other's projects and it was a great platform for them to um, exchange ideas and uh, learn from each other and uh, now moving on to the next mindset uh, which is curiosity so with curiosity uh, one of the things since we've been talking so much about being in the classroom uh, we one thing that we really encourage our students to do is to leave the classroom and to go out and to ask questions and to explore in the real world so here we are in a landfill actually so um, we ended up coming to this landfill because uh, we wanted to explore where does uh, um, our tea cups go when we when we drink tea at the canteen uh, and we drink tea in a paper cup where does it finally end up right so and that journey brought us uh, to the landfill so we had a whole bunch of students uh, come to the landfill explore uh, what the space is like of course we didn't get permissions that easily to enter the space um, and then with a little bit of con convincing uh, we made about like 10 to 15 phone calls and then we finally were able to you know enter the space and we had a guided tour of the landfill itself and um, and we got to understand that there's already so much that's going on in terms of uh, managing waste at the landfill and uh, with the leachate uh, treatment plant as well so this is one such trip. Again, this is the landfill um, in Belhali in Bangalore. So this was a really eye-opening experience because uh, students never really think of these things. They never really um, zoom out and uh, try to see the bigger picture. So one of the things that we get students to do is to, to zoom in and to zoom out quite a lot with their projects. So um, that ended up with uh, the students coming up with their own ideas of how could we deal with uh, with landfills and what are some of the problems that are there in landfills. So after going on that visit, these students came back, they made some models, they came up with some ideas, and uh, here they are presenting it uh, on Design Thinking Day to some of our uh, industry experts. And uh, our next mindset that we get, that we want students to develop is empathy and this is actually a, a tough one because usually it's um it's it's easy to it's easy to say fill out an empathy map it's easy to say uh go out into you know move out of your bubbles and uh, look at the world and uh, try to understand what's going on so maybe students may empathize with someone in that moment when they are there but uh being able to have that empathetic endurance to be able to continue to feel empathetic even beyond the time that you are you know with someone that is something that um, we are looking to cultivate a little bit more and we are trying to see how we can bring that uh, bring that quality into our students maybe through the design thinking club and maybe through social immersion programs um, so this is an example of students um, going out and trying to explore what it's like when um, you know people are having water scarcity issues or uh, any other issues. So they've gone out, they've spoken to uh, the locals um, in their local language. They have um, you know made some friends, and they have come back into the classroom with their findings. 
we've even had students uh, try to explore what are some of the problems faced in uh, public schools and they've actually sat through one of the classes and uh, you know been with the students there so all of this uh, came as surprises for us because we didn't um, we didn't really think that they would go out and do it slowly uh, as they you know as they got used to uh, design thinking, they, they started becoming a lot more adventurous, they started becoming less afraid, they started, uh, uh, you know, moving out of their comfort zone. So, um, in especially in Bangalore and in India, a lot of us live in these bubbles. Um, we live in a bubble where we are living in our home in a very comfortable uh, space, maybe in an apartment. And then we go to another bubble, which is uh, maybe our university or campus or workplace or wherever we go. And then we go to another bubble, which would be like maybe a mall or a restaurant. And uh, we try to usually uh, ignore everything else in between because we see so much happening in between. And uh, through our design thinking workshops, we get students to uh, kind of immerse in the in between spaces, in between the bubbles. Right. So um, and especially looking at the sustainable development goals, um, students pick up some kind of a project. And now uh, one thing that we are proud to say is that our students are not afraid to step out of their bubble and to explore what it's like in somebody else's world. Uh, of course, uh, growing that empathetic fitness and growing that empathetic endurance might take some time, but uh, we're getting there and we're happy with uh, the transformation that is taking place. And uh, this is uh, this is how our uh, you know our design thinking lab, our design thinking club, and the design thinking day, and our workshop. This is how it pans out over their course. So um, this is for a typical two-year PG program. Uh, students may have uh, one design thinking workshop, maybe a week-long workshop in year two but they get the opportunity to participate in two design thinking days, the one that happens in year one and the one that happens in year two. And once they complete their design thinking workshop, they get to be part of the design thinking club and they get access to the lab as well, because now they uh, understand the concepts and they're, they're able to uh, you know, implement um, and they are free to take on their own projects and, um, and collaborate with students from other streams as well. So it's very similar. Um, we, we, this is how it would be for a three-year program. They would have a design thinking workshop and post which they have access to all the design thinking days and the club and the lab. And uh, it's very similar, of course, for the four-year UG courses as well, except that for the four-year UG courses, we, um, we end up doing a semester long course. Uh, we do it over two semesters. So they actually have design thinking over an entire year. So these are the students who we really um, form a bond with. These are the students who we, um, you know, who, who get to really take their prototypes forward. So we wanted to bring this experience of uh, really immersing in the design thinking process to the other students who are not able to, um, you know, do a whole one year program. So that's why we wanted uh, those students to have access to the design thinking club as well as uh, the lab. And of course, a very similar story for the five year program as well. And that brings us to the very last part, uh, which is the design thinking club. Um, the design thinking club is, uh, is something that we are going to launch very soon. Uh, we are looking at uh, promoting student driven real, real world problem solving. Uh, we want students to um, develop the design thinking mindsets beyond their usual courses and we want to uh, promote interdisciplinary collaboration and of course have industry connect and uh, the way that we want to do this is through hackathons and sprints and prototyping and of course access to mentorship and uh, one of the other big things we're looking at is rural or social immersion camps so that uh, they may build their empathetic endurance. And we are looking to launch this in 2023. I know I've gone a little uh, longer than expected. And uh, I just have a short form. I was initially planning to do a Miro board, but uh, we have a short form that you can scan. Um, you can scan this QR code and uh, you, could, you could share your views on, uh, you know, how you go about thinking mindset in your institution, if you are part of an institution. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, please also share it with others in your institutions or in your circles. 
um, we'd love to hear from are doing that uh, you feel has had a big role to play in the way that students uh, uh, develop these mindsets. We'd love to hear from you. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Vintia. Big applause. Thank you. Big applause for for your contribution here to the uh, to the design thinking world. Actually, um, I, it's really impressive what you were coming up with. Actually. I had problems with my internet line here and I'm I still having seeing problems so I might um I I just got maybe two third of what you were saying uh but I could see your slides and so it's uh, I I saw your impressive achieve achievements actually I didn't know about your design thinking lab um uh, you told about it but I haven't seen pictures so it's it's uh, it's really great to see uh, we don't have that much of time left now, but I think there are lots of very positive comments in the in the chat so far. Is there anybody who has a has a direct question uh, or um, to Vindia? Please raise your hand or start speaking immediately if you like. There's Sebastian. Uh, yes, um, hi, Vintias. So great presentation and uh, thank you for sharing these uh, awesome uh, pics about your uh, journey. Um, oh, I guess I have to close the door. Um, one question, since uh, I very really like that um, mm -hmm. you had this mandatory course in year one already, so that students really can, can profit from, from what they've learned during all their studies. Have you first resource already if, um, uh, your course in year one fosters collaboration, uh, interdisciplinary collaboration, also in, in later years at your university. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. India, you're muted. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I, I was saying that I'm not sure. Thank you. Um, I was just saying that I'm not sure if I got your question completely, but you were asking about if we are looking at interdisciplinary collaboration uh, in our courses, right? In uh, our management. No, no. I mean, I, I guess you're you're, you're using inter, uh, interdisciplinary collaboration during your courses. I wanted to know whether that also fosters interdisciplinary collaboration once students have finished your courses and are back in their normal uh, studies. So do in your university architecture students still profit, collaborate with other disciplines, for instance? Yes, absolutely. We've seen that uh, design thinking actually creates a platform for students across all streams to speak the same language. And um, they, they make a lot of friends, especially with uh, the design thinking day and with our lab. And when students are hanging out, they, 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 they very organically form, um, you know, these friendships and they, they, it just very organically starts happening. And uh, sometimes some students, um, I've had a sound engineering student come up to me saying, uh, I have an idea for a, uh, for a new type of speaker. Can you connect me to uh, some engineering students and some design students? So uh, we have students coming up like that as well. Uh, we've seen we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of things happen more organically, and I think we will also start looking at what are some interventions we can have uh, to promote more interdisciplinary collaborations in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Avinash. Hi, Vindya. Good to Hi, hear uh, you speak so passionately about design thinking and your work. Um, I have. Yeah, I have a couple of questions, but I'll just ask one of them. Um, so in this whole ecosystem building exercise, where do you see the government coming and playing a role? Because government of India is like pouring in buckets of money uh, in the whole ecosystem building. How do you think you can use that money? You can use that collaboration. And the second is, um, where do you see the industry playing a role? Like at, at HPI here, we work with the industry a lot as a project partner, but do you also see that picking up in India or at CMR? So basically two questions. 
Both are wonderful questions. And uh, in fact, it's a great reminder as well. Thank you, Avinash. Uh, we are right now looking at some industry collaboration. We've uh, started with uh, something called Thinkubator. And uh, they are looking to come in and uh, help fund student projects. Um, they are looking for uh, students. They're looking, they, they want 200 entries uh, from, you know, they're looking for 200 entries from our university. They're looking to shortlist some teams. They're looking to, to fund some. We had some students even uh, be absorbed by um, uh, another event that was happening uh, at the IITs. So they have gone for a one week boot camp out there. And um, and we are with respect to the government of India, we are yet to um, to completely collaborate. We have had uh, I we have seen uh, you know some of the initiatives that they are up to, and uh, we are yet to start uh, getting into all of that. But we are we are on the brink. So um, our teammate Hari uh, actually has uh, you know brought in some very amazing uh, industry experts to come in and collaborate through Thinkubator, and uh, you know it, it it all happens through our networks, and we need to uh, very actively spend some time on uh, on doing this. I think this is something that we will look into next, especially with the launch of our Design Thinking Club. Thank you, Vindya. Good luck. Thank you, Vinash. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there any any other remark, question? Not now. Actually, we are now also officially uh, on the hour, um, and uh, which is usually the time where we uh, stop the recording. The official recording and we have that give uh, us the chance to have a little kind of fireside chat um, get together um, and we could use that opportunity to stop the recording